Hello friends, and today I want to do something a little different, and that's to share a lesson from my OpenToons Udemy course about onion skins. And last week in my beginner's guide I briefly showed how to use them, but there's so much more to them than that. So let's take a look. But do stick around to the end where I'll show you more about the course and share another useful video. In this lesson I want to cover the onion skins. And we took a brief look at them in an earlier lesson, but to use them effectively there's a few more things to understand. So what are onion skins? Well, they're just a way to have your current drawing shown to draw into, but also to see one or more other frames as ghost images to help you draw your new drawing accurately. And is often used when in-betweening to be able to space out the movement easier, and so is useful when drawing using post-pose animation, which is this section's exercise. But I'll talk more about that in the next lesson. But it's worth mentioning here that onion skins won't necessarily be the best way to figure out movement between frames. Scrubbing between frames is often a more useful way to fill the movement. And you can do that by clicking and dragging on the frame numbers in the X sheet or the timeline. Or by dragging the scrub bar below the viewer. Or as you draw, using either the cursor keys to move one frame at a time or the greater than and less than keys to move between drawings. But when drawings are on ones, this is the same thing. But there are plenty of times to use onion skins, so let me show you how. And there's two types of onion skins we can show. There's a fixed onion skin and a relative one. And both are selectable from the frame number header and are shown as small circles. Here they are on the timeline, and then on the X sheet. So on the timeline they're above the frame numbers and on the X sheet they're to the left of the frame numbers. So if I move to frame 3 on the X sheet and then move my pointer over the left hand side of the X sheet near frame 2 you'll see two dots. And if you hover over them their tooltips say fixed onion skin toggle on the left and relative onion skin toggle on the right. So the fixed onion skin buttons are furthest from the frame numbers on the left here and the relative ones are closer on the right. And the same is true on the timeline where the fixed onion skin is furthest away from the numbers at the top and the relative is closer to the numbers on the bottom. So the current drawing is on drawing number three and if I show the fixed onion skin of drawing two by hovering over the left hand dot and clicking it then turns turquoise blue. I can now see two drawings on screen. So I can see drawing number three shown in black as it really is, and drawing two shown with a red tint because it's an earlier frame. And if I had a later marker, say on drawing four, I use the fixed onion skin again for now, that drawing is shown with a green tint. And you can see in the ball marker on the current frame, this red and green circle, that shows the top half in red signifying that early frames onion skins are shown in red and the bottom half is green signifying that later onion skin drawings are shown with a green tint. So if I untick the fixed onion skin toggle for drawing number four, so I can only see the onion skin drawing for drawing number two, and then when I move to frame four, you can still see frame two's drawing onion skin image, and that's because the onion skin is fixed. So I can move to any frame and I'll always see this image. So if I move to frame 3 and then turn off the fixed onion skin but turn on the relative onion skin, again you'll see drawing number 2 shown with a red tint. And you notice that the relative onion skin marker is now linked to the current frame by a small line. And now when I move, the marker moves with me and it shows the previous drawing. So on drawing number 4 it shows the onion skin for number 3. If I move to 5, it shows the onion skin for number four. So the relative onion skin shows the drawing relative to the current drawing. And you can show more than one drawing by either clicking on a marker one at a time or you can click and drag over multiple markers to see them all. And now as I move, those markers follow the current frame. And to turn off these markers, I can click and drag over all of them. And you can also mix and match these two types of markers. 
so I could choose to always show drawing number one as a keyframe using the fixed onion skin, but then show the previous one relative drawing. So now drawing number one, the large circle, is always shown. And as I move through the animation, the current drawing is shown, and so is an onion skin for the previous drawing. So how do you use the onion skins? Well, if I hide this level and add another, and then draw a circle, and then go to the next frame and draw a second, and then I'll add a blank drawing between the two by dragging this frame away, and then right-clicking and choosing Create Blank Drawing. So now I've got a blank drawing number two between the first circle on drawing one and the second on drawing three. So now if I turn on the relative onion skin for the drawing before and for the drawing after, I can see the start and end positions, so I can more easily draw between them. And then you just continue like that, adding more in-betweens where needed. And there are other techniques for in-betweening, and I'll go into those in the next lesson. So now on to quickly cover the onion skin options that are in the context menu. So first, you can temporarily deactivate your onion skins instead of removing them, and this can make drawing easier by not having other drawings shining through. So you find that in the context menu by right-clicking and choosing Deactivate Onion Skin. And you see the markers are still there, but the drawings aren't showing. And then you can activate them again from the same menu. And a shortcut to this is simply to double-click on the large onion skin marker on the current frame. And at the minute, I'm only showing the onion skin for the current column. If I show the first column, and then move my circles using the selection tool, just so they're not overlapping each other. So here you can see I'm only showing the onion skins for column number two that I've just drawn in. But you can choose to onion skin across all columns in this scene by choosing the option Extend Onion Skin to Scene. And now I'm showing the previous onion skin and the next onion skin for both columns. And as I move through the animation, you see them both change. And again, to move it back just to the current column, just choose the option Limit Onion Skin to Level. And now it's showing the onion skin just for this column. And finally in that menu, you can clear all the onion skin markers by choosing the option Clear All Onion Skin Markers. And if you've got at least one fixed and relative onion skin, you get the option to remove just the fixed onion skin markers, or just the relative onion skin markers, or all of them. And finally, there's a few more options in the Preferences dialog that you'll want to know about. So open up the Preferences from the File menu, and go to the Onion Skin section, so first, you can hide the ability to use onion skins at all by unticking this box. And then you can change the apparent paper thickness by entering a new number here. And with thicker paper, you'll see less of the drawing underneath. So this ranges from a maximum of 100 thickness, which shows nothing of the drawings underneath, down to zero, which shows the full drawings underneath. But usually, you'll leave it somewhere in between which means that each subsequent drawing will get fainter the further it is away from the current drawing. And you can change the colour of the previous and following onion skin frames by adjusting the sliders next to these two colours, or by double-clicking on the colour square and then adjusting it on this pop-up palette editor. And this is useful if your drawing contains a lot of red or green. And the other options at the bottom here you won't need to use often, so I'll leave them for now. And finally, you might want to use the onion skin feature to help keep you on model. So you might use the fixed onion skin marker type to show the first frame that your character is on, and then as you animate, you can still see this one, which can help you keep the design and scale the same. So that's the onion skins, really useful for pose to pose animation or for keeping characters on model. So I hope you found this free lesson useful, and if so, you know what to do. 
And do check out my OpenTunes course on Udemy, where you can watch another six free lessons and check out the full curriculum to see what it offers. With 11 hours of organized video tutorials, articles, and downloadable projects, this course covers everything that I think you'll need to animate traditionally with OpenTunes. And by following this link, you'll be offered the best price. And for the next OpenTunes tutorial that will up your game, take a look at this video here. And I'll see you next time for another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.